Step into the world of a timeless movie that takes you on a roller coaster of emotions. Released in 1973, it's a gripping tale about two Navy men and a young sailor on their way to prison. Throughout the film, you'll experience moments that will make you laugh, gasp, and even shed a tear. One particularly memorable scene confronts the harsh realities of life and the consequences of actions, leaving a profound impact on viewers. It's a moment that prompts reflection on one's own choices and life's paths. What makes this movie stand out are its honest portrayal of human nature and the complexities of relationships. Its relatable characters make it a lasting symbol of the film industry. As you embark on this journey through the highs and lows of this classic film, get ready for an unforgettable ride. In the early 1970s, a film emerged that made waves in both cinema and popular culture. Directed by Hal Ashby, it brought a gritty realism to Navy life, captivating audiences with its raw portrayal of characters and their journey. The main actor's powerful performance earned him an Academy Award nomination, leaving a lasting impression on viewers. This movie inspired spin-offs and adaptations, including a stage play, and its influence can still be seen in how military life is depicted in films today. Overall, it's clear that this film has left its mark on the cultural landscape, continuing to resonate with audiences decades later. In a notable turn of events, Michael Moriarty was originally set to portray the character Captain Cutshaw in William Peter Blatty's The Ninth Configuration, slated for release in 1980. However, Moriarty withdrew from the project at the 11th hour, leading to Scott Wilson stepping in to fill the role. Notably, Moriarty made headlines in 1971 when he abruptly halted a performance of the night Thoreau spent in jail at the Alley Theater in Houston, citing exhaustion before leaving the stage, prompting the audience to disperse. As for the film itself, the last detail marked the feature film debut of Gilda Radner. In the last detail, several members of the cast and crew had military backgrounds. He was a firefighter in the California Air National Guard, while Otis Young served in the Marine Corps during the Korean War. Clifton James was a highly decorated Army Infantry Platoon Sergeant in World War II, and cinematographer Michael Chapman served in the Army during the Korean War. Daryl Ponixon, the author of the novel, drew from his Navy experience while writing the story. Jack Nicholson opted for the role of Billy Bad Aspidusky in the last detail over Johnny Hooker in The Sting, as he didn't want to appear in a purely commercial picture. His close friend Robert Town wrote the film. Robert Redford eventually took the role, and both Nicholson and Redford were nominated for Best Actor at the Academy Awards in 1973, losing to Jack Lemmon. Nicholson has appeared in 10 films nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars, winning three. Only two of these films, Broadcast News and The Departed, didn't earn him an Oscar nomination. He holds the record for eight Oscar-nominated performances in Best Picture-nominated films. In one scene, while on their journey, the characters pass by what they believe to be Calvin Coolidge Junior High, but it's actually Vincent Massey Academy in the Toronto suburb of Etobicoke. Interestingly, this same school later served as the setting for Degrassi Junior High. Clifton James and Ned Beatty shared the screen in four films, The Deadly Tower, Silver Streak, Guyana Tragedy, The Story of Jim Jones, and Superman Roman II. Jack Nicholson underwent a significant transformation for a later role, shaving his head for the bucket list. That's a testament to his dedication to his craft. Jack Nicholson delivered a standout performance in the 1973 film. Interestingly, two of his three Oscar-winning performances were directed by James L. Brooks. This achievement places him among a select few actors who have won two Oscars under the same director. Notable among them are Walter Brennan, Diane Weist, and Christoph Waltz. Nicholson was also considered for roles in Woody Allen's films and for parts played by Kevin Costner in notable movies. These instances shed light on Nicholson's versatility as an actor and the respect he commands in the industry. Jack Nicholson, renowned for his roles in Easy Rider, Chinatown, and About Schmidt, among others, earned critical acclaim for his performance in The Last Detail. He garnered numerous awards, including those from the New York film critics. His decision to prioritize About Schmidt over Bad Santa led to Billy Bob Thornton taking on the latter role. Meanwhile, Carol Kane, known for her appearances in Dog Day Afternoon, and Annie Hall contributed to The Last Detail success. Her work in the film added to her impressive filmography, which includes notable titles like The Muppet Movie and When a Stranger Calls.
Randy Quaid faced financial troubles in 2000, filing for bankruptcy with his wife. The couple owed the IRS $412,000 and California placed tax liens totaling over $207,000. By 2005, the state was fully compensated and the IRS debt settled, closing the case in 24. As for Jack Nicholson, he earned the moniker The Great Seducer from Rolling Stone magazine. In 2005, Premier Magazine ranked him 16 in their list of the greatest movie stars of all time. In the 1973 film, the use of explicit language was notably high with the word fuck, and its variations uttered a record-breaking 65 times. One interesting casting choice was the actor who portrayed the racist bartender. He would later appear in other films alongside Jack Nicholson, always playing the role of a bartender. A real-life event closely tied to the film occurred in 1974, when the Department of Defense shut down the naval prison in Portsmouth, NH. Subsequently, all naval prisoners were transferred to Fort Leavenworth Military Prison in Kansas. These real-world connections added depth to the narrative of the last detail, making it not just a movie, but a reflection of a changing era in American history. In the world of acting, there are fascinating stories that often go untold. Take, for instance, the tale of Jack Nicholson's pursuit of a role in Equus, a story marked by passion and disappointment. Similarly, Carol Kane's journey from a job at a magazine to her breakthrough in film highlights the diverse paths actors can take. And then there's Nancy Allen, who made a principal decision regarding a role in Equus that reflected her values as an artist. These stories, filled with near misses and bold choices, add layers to the actors' careers and show us that Hollywood is more than just what we see on screen. In fact, the behind-the-scenes tales can be just as captivating as the movies themselves. Jack Nicholson, known for his diverse roles in film, had an interesting trajectory beyond the last detail. Initially slated for the role of Daddy Warbucks in Annie, he withdrew when the original producer departed, leading to Albert Finney's eventual casting. Nicholson's Mulholland Drive Home once shared a driveway with Marlon Brando, his co-star in The Missouri Breaks. In an amusing twist, there's a scene in the last detail where the characters propose a toast to Batman and Superman. Nicholson later became associated with the villains for both superheroes, portraying the Joker in Batman, and being linked to play Lex Luthor in Tim Burton's abandoned Superman Lives project. These anecdotes provide a glimpse into Nicholson's varied career, showcasing his ability to navigate different genres and his unexpected connections within the film industry. In 1973, a film marked a turning point in the career of its lead actor, who later faced personal challenges. The movie's director, part of an exclusive group, achieved a rare feat by directing performances that won Academy Awards in all four acting categories. Separately, a comedian, not directly associated with the aforementioned film, but noteworthy nonetheless, left a lasting mark. Her battle with ovarian cancer inspired her husband and cancer psychotherapists to establish non-medical centers across the United States and Canada. These clubs provide a comfortable environment with facilities like art centers, exercise spaces, game rooms, and a children's area named after one of the comedian's comedic actions. The mentioned film, released in 1973, remains significant in the lead actor's career and was directed by a key figure in cinema history. Meanwhile, the comedian's influence extends beyond the entertainment world, leaving a meaningful mark through the established non-medical centers, 